Good morning and welcome back to our devotions. Now, India is once again reeling under a religious chaos. Nupur Sharma, an Indian politician who actually made a remark on a Prophet Muhammad and his wife, and because of such a statement, you know, brutal murder, brutal, you know, a lot of chaos happening in India. While we're just reading under that and getting with that, you know, we just today we in the news we heard of Lena uh, Manimekli and the Kali controversy. It looks like India is focused on, you know, uh, religious problems always, whether it's in politics or social or culture, whatever values, everything seems to be looking at religious as uh, religion as its, you know, fuel. I think. Uh, what do we, you know, as Christians, as you and I, need to look at this aspect is, even right now we were told, we are told that Supreme Court is looking into very special cases of, you know, uh, persecution or atrocities towards the, the Christian uh, faith, people, people of the Christian faith. So I think these, uh, you know, ideas need to be discussed now again and again. So in this short devotion, I wanted to tell you how a Christian with an exclusive faith need to approach, you know, uh, the the pluralistic context of India. I think nowhere in the world we can have such a beautiful context as India, our country. So, you know, I, I'll take you to I'll take you to Acts chapter 17 verses 16 through 31. But I will not be reading the whole passage. I'll just read through with. Verses 22 to, you know, following. Follow Paul then stood up in the meeting of Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I see you are religious. In every way you are very religious. Okay? And verse 23 it says, For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. Now, what you worship as something unknown, I am going to proclaim to you. So, my friends, I wanted to tell you this. You know, what, how, or what, or how can a Christian approach this pluralistic context? I think we can just follow. I, I, want, I want to go with four R's that I've coined right now. Number one, recognize. Acts chapter, uh, uh, verse 18, chapter 18, verse 22 says, I see. You know, Paul is able to see, he's able to recognize and acknowledge that there is a presence of pluralism in that context. If he was in a Jewish context, he would be telling Jesus is the Son of God. He would be proclaiming with all his, you know, lungs out. But here he's looking at it in a very subtle way. He's talking to a Greek context. So he's telling them, I acknowledge that you are very religious. See, that kind of recognition, that kind of things should be in us. We need to acknowledge that the situation or the context where we live in. Paul, I think he see that, you know, Athens is well known for a very glorious past. It is the intellectual center for these Greek people. And Plato's, you know, Plato's uh, philosophy is there, Aristotle's philosophy is there, and so many philosophies are there. Okay, now Paul knows that and acknowledges that and recognizes that. Point number two that I want to share, respect. He's able to respect that fact that these people are religious. I see that you are religious in every way. See, this is the thing. As Christian, as Christians, we with an exclusive faith, we need to approach them, respect even the other people of other faiths. Even the Muslims need to respect the Hindus. The Hindus need to respect the other, you know, uh, people of other faiths as well. So that kind of respect should be there, you know. When we speak, I think this, these two lessons we can learn from Paul. And then that, that should be our approach. The, the point number three, the R, the third R that I want to tell you is being resourceful. You are going for a mission. God has appointed you to be ambassadors, to be his spokespersons. So you need to be resourceful in this. This is the word of God. If you don't read this, if you don't meditate on this, if you do not know this, how can you be resourceful? If you look at verses 24 and following, Paul is able to, you know, uh, this world is full of debate. You see it on every news channel now. It's just not news, but opinions. So people will ask you, like in verse, 
in, in verse uh, 19. May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting. And Paul is able to answer them. The God, verse 24, the God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands and he is not served by human hands. Paul is directly pointing at towards the futility of that religion but respectfully. So that is how we need to be resourceful. And the last point is reasonable. Paul gives out reasonable you know, beliefs. And he says, verse 25, and he is not, verse 26, from one man he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth and he determined the times set for them and the exact places where they should live. It looks like Paul is able to reason out the creation of how God created us and human beings so that we can have relationship, responsible relationship with him. So we need to be reasonable. Anselm, one of the theologians, he said that, you know, faith, theology is faith seeking understanding. So once you understood your faith, I think you can make a reasonable and sound judgment, sound apologetics. With these few words, I want to conclude with one statement from my friend Wibon Bo. He is serving as a, as a missionary in Cambodia right now and he used to tell me, you need to have the faith of an exclusivist, no compromising, but you need to have an inclusive heart as well with a pluralistic approach. With these few words, God bless us all.